Awesome. Hey, welcome to Doc Talk Live. Uh, I'm Brad Goodman, and I'm with Glenn Fleisick um, tonight, today. Um, I'm in front of his biomechanics lab at American Sports Medicine Institute. Um, thank you so much, Glenn. Thanks sure. for coming on. Sure. I'm so excited to, to talk to you about sports biomechanics because I, I think it's so cool. And, um, you know, that's sort of because I get to sort of decide what shows we get to do because right. it's my show. I tend to do shows that interest me. But that's not to say that people shouldn't type in shows that they want me to do. I will try to do them. So, and also, if you're watching this on a rebroadcast, um, I'd like to also know what's your favorite sport mm -hmm. um, and why, and uh, or what's your favorite sport to watch versus what's your favorite sport to play. Anyway, get that out of the way. Glenn Fleisick, expert in biomechanics. You went to, was it MIT that yes. you trained? Yeah. How did you get interested in biomechanics? In, in sports biomechanics. Well, How did you find this? Well, I am of a certain age. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and we didn't really have biomechanics as a field when I went to MIT. I majored in mechanical engineering. Okay. And, uh, and uh, in mechanical engineering at MIT, you have to do a senior project. So I was wandering and looking at the senior projects, and mechanical engineers, some were building bridges and car things and stuff like that. And one, guy, one lab was looking at golf swings. And I'm like, well, this is, as a sports guy, this is a more fun use of mechanical engineering. And I'm like, what is this? This is biomechanics, the professor said. And I'm like, what's biomechanics? This is 1984. And, um, and uh, he said, biomechanics is biology plus mechanics. In other words, how do animals, humans, move? That's what okay. it is. I'm like, great. So biomechanics is applying uh, the principles of mechanics and physics to human motion. Then I got into sports because I like sports and I did that at MIT. Then I worked at the Olympic Training Center and I met a young doctor after that named Dr. Jim Andrews. This was in the 1980s and we hit it off. He was going to start a new place in Birmingham, Alabama and I frankly didn't know where Alabama was based. Going All right. from, from other places in the Northeast and stuff but I knew where it was and it came down and took a chance that was in the 1980s, and for the last 30 years, we've done great stuff. Sports biomechanics, as you were saying, you're a doctor of physical medicine, correct? Right. And so, so you know about uh, human motion and everything. And really what we're trying to do is look at different athletes, whether baseball players or tennis players, and see if they're moving a certain way that's gonna lead them to get hurt or improve their performance or whatever. And so this is the biomechanics lab. Why don't we go and Yeah, talk? Yeah, I want you to show us your lab. Please do. Please do. So this is this is Glenn's lab. This is actually it's actually named the Dr. James Andrews Biomechanics Lab, but you could call it Glenn's lab if you want. Well, this is where you work. Sure. Right? This is Megan Stewart. She's one of our biomechanics on staff, also. Hey, Megan. Yeah. This is this is uh, Dr. To Glenn see you. And um, so we're going to show you a little about a little more about biomechanics. And just, awesome. You want to ask a question, or you want to just start showing some stuff? Well, um, just. Yeah, sure. where are we? What is this camera? Sure. Okay, show us around. Okay. okay, so again, biomechanics, we want to capture the human motion because, you know, why does one baseball pitcher hurt his elbow and one pitcher doesn't? Or why does one uh, tennis player have shoulder problems and not? You can really do biomechanics for improving performance or for uh, preventing injury. And as a medical place, we're more interested in the injury side. But I'll tell you a little secret that if you improve an athlete's mechanics, the reduce the risk of getting injured, and they'll improve their performance. So you kind of get two for the price of one. And the equipment we use is a motion capture system. If you look over here, you can see a bunch of cameras on the wall. Um, if you want to follow me out here. I follow Glenn, Emily. Can you follow here? We have, uh, standing in the middle here, we're surrounded by 12 cameras, all around these red lights, okay? And these red lights are going to are all focus in this area over here in the middle. And what's going to happen is we're going to uh, put reflective markers on a person in biomechanics, and then we can track their motion. In fact, we can go in here and we're going to switch places with Megan here. It's going to set it up and demonstrate it. So, yeah. So, uh, if, uh, come back here with me, Brad. Okay. And Megan can step up there and be showing you this. This right here, of course, any camera, including this camera this Facebook is on, is a two dimensional view. And, but, if you put the views of all the cameras together, you could figure out where the person's moving in three-dimensional space. If you go look over here, she's putting reflective markers on. 
And she's just applying a couple uh, as an example. Okay, she's okay. putting them on her body. On her, okay. on her elbow or yeah, shoulder. On okay. her elbow, maybe a couple other things. And if we had an athlete, we would find all the, feel for all the bones and the joints, and we put them on all of the spots we normally would put it on. But for the sake of time, Megan's just gonna put a couple on, stand out in the live area. And if you wanna step out there, that's enough for Megan. And if you look over here on the screen, you see a, a, a little oh, dot person so moving there. That's so cool. Okay, now move around, and you can see how it's tracking where her arms are moving. You can just put your arms up and down, and imagine she had markers all on her body, and you can see how it's tracking her in space. Now, Megan, can you come over here because you're smarter with this computer than I am? Huh. And, um, and why don't you call up someone we've previously tracked for the sake of time? Call, call up a baseball player, but we've, we've put a baseball pitching mound in that area, and this is data we've previously collected. And uh, so this is, uh, what are we looking at, Megan? So this is a baseball pitcher. So these little rect uh, reflective markers that um, you just saw me out there right. waving around on. So we put 39 markers on them. Okay. And then they go and do their normal pitching motion. So either from the wind up or the stretch. And these markers get tracked throughout the pitch. And so you can see as we move through the pitch, we can kind of place them at key points. So at foot contact, we can see what their body looks like, what their mechanics are at this point in time. Okay. Can you, can you zoom in on that a little? Yeah. Can you zoom in. And can you rotate a little? What would the person look like from different views? You see, um, can you rotate that? Mm -hmm. So you can you see, even, even though you can look at it from any view because we've cl collected exactly where they are in three-dimensional mm -hmm. space. So we can look at their stride length and also where their foot is and their el different elbow angles yep. and uh, arm angles. And can you predict where they'll have injuries based on? Well, that's a few steps from that process. So let, okay. let, let, me, let me talk mm -hmm. that through. Exactly. So if this baseball pitcher pitches, we can then see how his motion is. We, we'd ask them to come and do maybe 10 full effort pitches. And then what we do is we uh, collect all the data. <clears throat> we calculate the biomechanics. Frankly, this equipment we bought and other biomechanics labs have equipment like this. Okay. But we bought this, but we wrote our own software for analyzing the things we care. Because someone could buy biomechanics to analyze how people run or, or, or walk or other typical mo uh, human motion, motions. Motions, motions. okay. Motions. Um, <laughs> um, but we're doing baseball pitching and things like that. And so we wrote a program calculating what's called the biomechanics of the proper things. We call it bio pitch. And it calculates what is the knee angle at the time of foot contact? What is the maximum amount the elbow bends? Things we did, essentially, based on our school knowledge, we wrote uh, the kinematics, which are the equations of human motion, and then we also calculate what's called the kinetics, which is the uh, forces in the joints. Now, we didn't stick force sensors in the person, but using the cameras and knowing the person's body weight and height, you could calculate how much force there is on their joint. Okay. okay. So, so you're going to let me do some motion, is that right? Well, for the sake of time, yes. For the sake of time, we're gonna simplify this. Besides this full biomechanics equipment, we also have this high-speed video over here. Okay. And uh, this high-speed video doesn't measure the biomechanics, but we could, uh, we could watch a video. In other words, we had a baseball pitcher earlier today, am I right, Megan? It was a high school or college pitcher? High school pitcher. It was a high school pitcher came earlier today. We did that system and this system at the same time. Gotcha. And from that system, we're able to make the exact measurements. His elbow is bent 95 degrees, et cetera. From this system, which we're going to use on you, we can make a video and then uh, uh, see uh, what we see. But really, we don't give the answers based on this. We give the answers based on that. We show it with this. Okay? So why'd you have me put on the special clothes? Why can't I just do it in this? Well, uh, it'll, it'll be, uh, uh, well, because people don't play tennis in that, but also because, uh, because what we're going to show, we're going to illustrate the principles of the kinetic chain or, or the full body sequence. And really, if you're wearing clothes like this and you're moving around and clothes are doing this, then we might get a misrepresentation in our eyes about where your hips were and where your knees were because of the clothes. So, All right, are we ready to try this? Unless, no, unless you want to try it naked. No, I, think, I don't want to do it naked. But uh, let's go for tight clothes. But I could have just wore this, but, but I have clothes on under here. here. All right, here we go. I'm always ready for tennis, so we're going to... We're gonna, you know, you guys might have watched the Pilates one. I was doing Pilates in this. Okay, and I don't wear these shirts, so. 
This is, excuse this is, the tan. This is your normal tennis excuse outfit. Excuse the tan. This is not my normal tennis outfit. All right, so we're going to serve now. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, we're right. We're right. Yeah. Over there. Yeah. Okay, so we, we, we removed the baseball pitching mound, obviously, and we put it in a modified tennis court. And so what we're going to do, we like to study tennis serves, golf swings, baseball pitches. Do you, do you know why we like those most? Say that again. Well, why do we study um, a base, oh. baseball pitch or a golf swing or a tennis swing? What, what's unique about those motions compared to other things like uh, being tackled or other things? You know unique I mean? about them. Um, From a biomechanics point of view. No, no, not exactly. But biomechanics is you are completely doing your mechanics. You're not reacting to other people. True. In other words, the tennis serve is better to study than the tennis forehand. Or a slide because the face. ball is coming you towards tackle. you, you're you're generating everything. And not only that, you have a certain technique, a certain biomechanics that you tend to repeat every single time. Okay. And by repetition, with good mechanics you can get good performance. With bad mechanics you can get injury. So um, biomechanics is really well suited for studying overuse injuries. It's really hard to study a football player being tackled and the knee buckling and tearing the ACL because. It's kind of an uh, acute traumatic event. But overuse injuries, uh, chronic injuries, repetition injuries are better suited for biomechanics because we can look at your mechanics, see if you're doing something wrong, and then you could adjust. You don't have to worry about the wind or people tackling you or anything like that. Super. Okay. okay. All right. I got How many balls do I need? Uh, why don't you just take uh, I've one got six. I've got it. Okay. Six. Uh, let me, I'll tell you what, just for kicks, we'll turn the radar gun on here and see how fast it is. See how slow it is? And uh, uh, wait till we're ready here. Um, You're on your way. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Uh, Megan, are you, are you ready? Yep. Okay, uh, Brad, do you want any warm up or do you want to just go for it? Okay, here we go. No, I'm not fast enough. Why not fast enough? About 91 miles. 91. Miles. Do you want to do sure, sure. that one back yeah. a little further? Yeah, you know, the wind is serve over 100 miles an hour to lead. Okay, so, okay. Oh. Um, for, for, uh, for that one, I'm sorry, for that one, I need to get up here. Back. Back. Yeah. White line for this, uh, here? Here? Or this one down here? I know that's a little Yeah, that's answer. perfect. Okay. All right, don't worry about that. All right. So just, uh, just humor me. All right. Start from here. Again, yeah. right. don't want that there. All right, here we go. process the video get ready for a demonstration. Alright, but uh, look at this chit chat a little bit. Can I put my shirt back on? Yes, yeah. <laughs> can I take my shirt off? <laughs> yes, you can. Okay. Alright. Megan's processing the video. You just see there's no questions. Oh, okay. What is, the topic? what is the tennis topic? It's not tennis. It is sports file mechanics. So, I guess my curiosity is is I know that you're like the guru with baseball uh -huh. and have studied the pitching, uh -huh. but but I I don't play baseball. Uh -huh. I play tennis, mm -hmm. and serving is a lot like is a lot like throwing, mm -hmm. except with the racket. So it should be that a lot of the stuff that you know from baseball pitching from throwing for sure would translate over to 
my mechanics was serving, which sure. is why I wanted to yeah. use the so tennis service as an example. So why don't we just start there? For sure. So, uh, so a lot of mechanics uh, use what's called a kinetic chain. That's a biomechanics term. What coaches call it or players call it is, is a coordination. Okay. Now, uh, we'll see it on the video in a second. Um, in real life, it looks like your body just bam, it goes, okay? Mm -hmm. But really, when we watch it on video, you'll see that different parts of your body go in a different sequence. Your, your hips rotate at a different time and your upper trunk rotates and stuff. And the um, different labs study different things, but we kind of specialize in overhand throwing motions. Exactly. And so the tennis serve is not that far from the baseball pitch. In fact, we published some papers. We published a study on how elite males versus females, and also uh, uh, what are the kinetics, the forces. And some of the things uh, that we saw, which we'll hopefully see in your mechanics, is that there's a kinetic chain, and what a, a top tennis player will do in the serve is he or she will extend their front knee, which is hopefully what we'll see, and then they will rotate their upper trunk. But while they're rotating their upper trunk forward, their arm is rotating backward. Your elbow will hopefully bend to about 90 degrees, uh -huh. and your arm will externally rotate to about 180 degrees. And if you know uh, external rotation, this is zero, this is 90, and 180 is way back here. Neither you nor I can do that. We're not elite athletes. Plus, even an elite athlete can't do that statically. They're just dynamically. Wow. Forward. Okay. We'll see how far you get. Okay. And, um, and, uh, and then that's the kinetic chain to load up. Right. And once that's rotated, then the elbow will extend this motion, uh -huh. the wrist will flex, this motion, and the shoulder will, what's called, internally rotate, which is rotating forward. So the point is, uh, Brad, whether you're throwing a baseball in a line, 90 miles per hour, or hitting a tennis ball 90 miles per hour, the, the trick is you're, um, you're trying to move a ball straight, but nothing on your body moves straight. Everything on your body is an angle, the joints. And so what you're nogging, or the athlete, has to do is by practice uh, learn how to move all the angles to add up to form a linear velocity. It's right. Kind of, it's really tricky. So I'm 90. I'm not happy with 90. Okay. What, what how do I get? Call 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 how do I get more than 90? Uh, well, we're looking at your mechanics. All right. Perfect. Perfect. But we're not quite ready for that yet. So uh, uh, she's processing the video or getting the video ready. But again, the proper biomechanics for safety or for performance for the overhead motions, whether it's throwing a softball or a baseball or hitting a tennis ball, is the proper sequence. Honestly, what's unique about the tennis compared to the baseball is you have an extra link, which is the racket right. itself. So it's like an extra part of your arm. So really what we see is the tennis player doesn't get the same uh, velocity at the shoulder that the baseball player does, but he gets more ball velocity. because. This joint doesn't get the same velocity, but he has the advantage of one extra joint. Exactly. Okay, one extra length, okay? How, how do athletes find you? How, how, does, uh -huh. how does an athlete get to be in your lab? Mm -hmm. And again, it's not just our lab, uh, the other labs, but again, we're not I want to know how they get to your lab. Okay, okay, okay. But again, when we started in the 1980s, when I started this with Dr. Andrews in 1987, people didn't really know what biomechanics was, and we were building it. Now, it wasn't even an internet yet, okay? So, right, so, exactly. Uh, now, if you go to our website, uh, ASMI, uh -huh. ASMI.org, uh -huh. okay? Um, that website says, uh, uh, has some research information, but also uh, click here to schedule a biomechanical evaluation. Okay. We're focusing on the baseball pitchers. That is our, our strength. And the reason we've been studying baseball pitching so much uh, as the concentration is because that's the number one source of our injuries and our surgeries, and we're really trying to prevent that. So our focus has been trying to help uh, kids not have Tommy John surgery or other types of injuries, and adults, and you go to ASMI.org and learn how to come for an evaluation. And so, in, in, are you the guy who is responsible for, like, how many pitches a pitcher should pitch when he's 12 years old? Are you that guy? Are you happy with that or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, I don't, but, have, but I don't, I don't, I don't have a dog that. in that fight. But, but I am that guy. <laughs> uh, what happened is our institute, uh, and myself and everyone else here at ASMI, we did what's called epidemiology research. Mm -hmm. Epidemiology research is not about the skin. Epidemiology is the study of epidemics, okay, as you know. And uh, what we did was we 
got out of the lab and we went to the fields, the, the youth baseball fields and high school fields, and we, we kept track of how many pitches kids were throwing, hundreds of kids, for years. And we found out which kids were ending up hurting their arm. And we found, uh, we published this, and we found some papers saying, you pitch this amount, you have this chance of getting hurt, you pitch this amount, you have this chance of getting hurt. Based on that epidemiology research, Little League Baseball, USA Baseball, and frankly, every baseball, most big baseball organizations throughout the country changed. When you and I were kids, uh, baseball had limits, you could pitch so many innings per week. But based on our research, we got it more granular and you get how many pitches per game you could throw before you have to remove. And is it that data that filtered up into Major League Baseball that said, hey, uh, we got to take this guy out, you know, he's up to 90 pitches already? Or it's an interesting question. Uh, it kind of came from the top and the bottom. What happened was uh, uh, in the 1990s, we noticed that uh, high school pitchers were starting to have what used to be grown up injuries, okay? Um, uh, and then at the same time, Major League Baseball and the fans were noticing their pitchers were getting hurt. So Major League Baseball and television were starting to say, hey, he's had 100 pitches, better take him out. So the consciousness came at the Major League Baseball level and Major League Baseball was trying to make they're paying those guys millions of dollars. They're trying sure. to um, preserve their, their athletes. So Major League Baseball was ahead of the curve and was trying was very conscious of what was good. So they self-regulated, and Major League Baseball does not have any rules or limits on how many pitches it could do. It kind of self-regulated itself. Teams are invested in making sure their players are healthy, so teams are on the watch out. But amateur athletes, amateur baseball was a different story, Brad. And, um, uh, amateur baseball was going crazy in the, in the 2000s where kids were on this team and this team and they were pitching 100 pitches, 150 pitches, and on Wednesday and Friday, it was out of control. So this epidemiology research led to uh, rules for safety and it's been embraced. And I want to say one more, I want to pitch one more thing. It's called Pitch Smart, pitchsmart.org. Pitchsmart.org is a website, Major League Baseball, made with USA Baseball, with ASMI and has all the regulations for, um, for rules and guidance for youth baseball. Do certain teams um, make you study certain pitchers before they'll sign them? Oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So that, that happens, so, yeah. so you get consulted on them uh, too. Typically, uh, the pro teams don't have us study people before they sign them. The pro teams, a major league, how baseball works is the major league baseball team has a, about a handful of minor league teams. Mm -hmm. So the major league team typically has us analyze some of their minor league prospects who are already professionals and being, being paid, but not the, the big guy. And so they have us study their minor league guys essentially to see how they could become major league guys. That's what happens. Okay, so that they're not really studying to say, hey, maybe we should take a pass on this guy because uh, yeah, so, so, his, his angle here is off. Yeah. So uh, it's not set up that way right now. Uh, in fact, the amateur players themselves, uh, the, high, the high school, college, mom and dad, whatever, they come on their own behalf as an individual. Um, so high school and colleges, players come by themselves. I want to get ahead, I want more velocity, I don't want to get hurt. Um, frankly, they come for more velocity, but we tell them how not to get hurt. Because uh, people don't usually worry about injuries until it happens. Exactly, did you hear what I said? How do I get more speed? Right, exactly. Right? right. That's exactly what I said. If you're, Are we ready? If you, if you're injured, if you get injured, Speed is zero miles per hour. Yeah, it's true. Well, I'll, figure, I'll figure out a way. I'll so, go left hand. So let's do a segue. Let's go back to this elite athlete, Dr. Brad. Yeah, not, 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 no, 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 that's not true, but so whatever. Any, any questions? Mm -hmm. No, we're good. Okay. Brad, uh, and, uh, actually, why don't you sit here? You can drive. And Brad, you sit you here. You are in here? here. Sure. And uh, I'll sit here. And, uh, you want the pointer? Yeah. Uh, sure, sure. <laughs> okay. Um, Which of you? So, uh, I'm doing. Do me a favor. Let me. I'm gonna get some of these lights up. Let's get some yeah, lights up. Yeah, it's too reflective. Uh, uh, yeah. Does that help over there? And I want to hear it turn up. Emily, is that better? Or is yeah, that now it's better. better. And can you still, are we too dark? Uh, us That's going to be fine. We have a professional sure. documentary <laughs> filmmaker today. <laughs> um, so we made some videos, and uh, we made a high-speed video, and this, that, that camera uh, that we recorded you on 
we had different, uh, we did the back view and, and, and uh, side view, but what you didn't notice was we also did a top view. So why don't we start with that? Okay. Um, we're going to, so let's just watch and see what we see. You, see, you can move it forward a little, or it's happening. It's going. So what we're going to be looking for from this view is whether you stepped in the forward direction or if you stepped too far across or, or this way. And also we're going to watch the sequence of when your hips rotate and when your upper trunk rotate. So you see the front knee flexion. We'll see that from the side view a little better. Look at that face. Uh, that's <laughs> okay. now, now watch the arm externally rotate. And watch you, we're rotating the hips and the upper trunk. And you can see the elbow extension. Okay, and can you do me a favor? Let's go, let's yep. go to a different view. Okay. Let's go to the side view. Okay, good, good. So... Again, what I want to see, when you throw, I want to see, when you throw, ball goes up, I then I want to see you flex your knee or bend your front knee. Okay. Now the first power generation, pause it, pause it. First power generation, the ball's out, is you're going to extend that knee. What extending that front knee should do is it's going to pass energy up and allow you to rotate your hips. And then uh, we'll see the upper trunk rotate forward as the arm rotates backward. Go ahead and play it. Let's see if that happens. So here's the front knee is straightening. You see that? Let's stop. Pause. And you see... Uh, you had to go back farther. Uh, it happened too fast. But you can see the upper trunk is now rotating. You see it's kind of facing us in the camera view. Okay? And go ahead and play it. And it's rotating to face the target while the arm rotates back. And so, uh, I'll pause right there. So this is what's called, your knee is pretty much extended. You've passed up the energy here. You've uh, done a uh, rotation of the upper trunk here. And you've externally rotated. Like I said, the so this is the players, kinetic chain. You're saying yeah. I'm taking energy and I'm bringing it up that right. way. Okay. Now, now, an athlete, just hold it. An athlete who doesn't do it right, everything looks like it's moving right, but it's not the right sequence. Okay. So I'm not unsequenced. Right I'm not saying you. I'm saying if someone is okay. not doing it right, all right, they look like they're doing the right things and it's not working. Um, but uh, you can see the external rotation. Uh, what I'm saying is that an elite tennis player gets about 180 degrees of external rotation meaning that their wrist would be over here, meaning that their arm would pretty much be horizontal, uh, perpendicular to the trunk. So yeah. this, this should be like that, right? Now, right? Yes, now, okay. if someone's biomechanics are not ideal, not optimal, it could be a technique thing or a physical limitation. So if the timing is off between your knee extension and your shoulder rotation, that might be a technique thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could work on that. If your arm's not going far enough back, it could be a physical limitation. You're a certain age, you don't have genetic... Um, Elasticity genetic, of those exactly, tissues, exactly. right. So uh, you don't have enough external rotation as a, an elite athlete. I, don't, I think that's where you're at. I mean, okay. Okay. But you, we could work on the other parts of, of the uh, kinetic chain. And let's play it forward. Let's see if the elbow straightens while the shoulder internally rotates and then the wrist flexes to come forward. And then, interestingly, after you hit the ball or throw a ball, whatever the sport is, you need a kinetic chain. Go ahead and play. You, you see things happen in a different sequence going down your body. Your arm goes, your upper trunk will rotate, and then your hips will rotate, and you take a step forward. The reason you do the kinetic chain after you hit the ball is so you can live to do it again, okay? If you just came, came to complete stop, the, the deceleration force on your shoulder would be too great. Right. So you need a good chain before you hit the ball to get ball velocity, uh -huh. but you need a good chain after you hit the ball, it's just as important, to decelerate all the energy that's built up in your body so that you could um, um, have proper connect chain and not have too much deceleration force. Okay. So I need, I need more external rotation if possible. Right, but that's probably barking up the lungs I don't think it's going to happen. I yeah. agree. Um, okay. But one thing uh, is we could uh, work on the, you might be able to get more upper trunk velocity, which would have, go, go back. Okay. Now, go to play. 
Now, from here, upper trunk velocity, which is coming in now, has to do with core strength, okay? So I think your technique is good. Okay. But I think uh, the strength and conditioning of your trunk would add velocity. That makes sense. To the trunk, and maybe relieve some of the load on the shoulder. Yeah. Have you had any uh, injuries, uh, chronic or? Uh, Too numerous to count. Uh huh. <laughs> but you know, I still I just play through them. Yeah. And and my MRI looks terrible. Uh huh. <laughs> because maybe your shoulder is doing more than it's here. If you get the trunk to do more, then. You're not asking too much of the shoulder. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's a uh, cool. That's sports biomechanics. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. And I, uh, Emily, what do you think? It's good. We good? Yeah. Any questions or anything else, Brad? Um, nothing really burning on my mind. So there's nothing from there coming through. Okay. Well, then we'll just we'll leave it at that. Okay. Um, ASMI.org. Right. right. That's right. how they found you. Right. And uh, I want to thank Glenn for showing us your lab it's it to me it's fascinating and um if folks could write in what their favorite sport is i'd be i'd be curious to know and if they have questions maybe sure. maybe emily could jump on because uh, clearly she knows facebook a lot better uh, than uh, you or i <laughs> and, uh, and, and and we can talk about that. the sports by mechanics of baseball or other sports yeah. awesome yeah. Well, thank you so much appreciate it y'all thank you